Hi everyone, welcome to the MBDA FPC uh, Connect webinar series. We'll be starting in about four minutes. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our MBDA FPC Connect webinar series. Uh, we'll be starting in about two minutes.
Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today for our MBDA uh, FPC Connect webinar series, uh, Growing Your Business Through Federal Contracting. My name is Claudia Barrera and I'm a part of the MBDA Federal Procurement Center team. I want to introduce our director, Tommy Marks. Um, our office is uh, responsible for helping minority business enterprises gain access to federal contracting opportunities, capital, key contacts, and market intelligence to successfully compete to win federal contracts. Tommy Marks is a retired member of the Army Senior Executive Service is the, and is the former director of the Army Small Business Programs Office for the Secretary of the Army. Prior to serving as a civil servant, Tommy served 24 years in the Army as an infantry and aviation officer, retiring as a Lieutenant Colonel in September 2011. So Tommy, you have the floor. Well, hello. How are you doing? Now, here's what I just told the team in the room. A lot of folks are probably still eating lunch and they haven't dialed in. So guess what they're going to miss? A very exciting and informational presentation. But before we get started, uh, last night I slept a little bit and I said, oh, what could I do? What about something from the director's corner? So Here's what I have from the director's corner today. And then you know, when it's all over, your surveys will tell me whether or not to try this again. But uh, for, for those companies that are out there that are hub zone companies or looking to be hub zone companies, two major events took place in the last two weeks. And I know there's somebody out there that knows this, but on the 26th of September, uh, September, excuse me, in November, the SBA issued their uh, final rule to expand the hub zone opportunities to small businesses and revitalize communities. What does that really mean to us? Well, the rules were pretty tight for hub zone. So now, effective 26th of December, what we'll see is a more, much more flexible process uh, with hub zones uh, designed to attract more small businesses and to encourage them to invest in the hub zone communities and hire hub zone residents. This rule changes will also make it easier for federal contracting officers to identify and work with hub zone certified small businesses. Again, it'll be effective uh, on the 26th of December and it's already published in the federal registry. What are some key things? Under the rule, the following changes are taking place. Greater certainty and expanded opportunity regarding geographic eligibility and residential requirements, which we all know in the business, that has really been a stickler. For example, if you, you hire somebody, must be in the hub zone. If they move out of the hub zone, then you lose them. That all changes as of 26 December. Uh, the greater detail, you can go to the SBA.gov to get that. But the example is an employee who resides in the hub zone for at least six months at the time of certification or recertification and continues to reside in that hub zone for at least six months may continue to be considered a hub zone resident as long as the individual is employed by the firm. Even if he, she, he or she moves to a non-hub zone area, or if the area of his residence loses the hub zone geographical eligibility, which is normally takes place because you have to renew, recertify every year. Oh wow, think of this. Five years now, uh, as of today, 2021, the hub zones maps are currently frozen and will be updated every five years as opposed to every year uh, as previously had to do and that all the data be based on the census data. Starting January the 1st, applications for hub zone certification will be processed within 60 days of a completed submission. That's another big change at the SBA. Finally, on this, this uh, rule, improve contracting prov provisions. If a firm is certified hub zone, small business at the time of his initial offer for a contract, it generally will be considered a hub zone small business throughout the life of the contract. That's a big change. Hub zone status will no longer be determined as a time of award. Finally, if a firm is a hub zone certified at the time of the initial award for a hub zone multiple award contract, it will be considered to be certified for each order issued which is again, a major difference in the uh, current uh, policy. So you can read more about this 
on the SBA website at sba.gov. Uh, you can go quickly get to it by going to media uh, uh, releases and you can click on their website and you'll see the what I'm reading to you today. The second part of the uh, major change at the uh, SBA is they issued a direct final rule which will allow all state governors to seek hub zone designations for certain rural areas in our country. That was released on the 18th of November. This direct rule will allow the governors to petition the SBA administrator to designate hub zone status to certain covered areas. A covered area is an area in a state that is located outside the urbanized area as determined by the Census Bureau with a population of not more than 50,000 people and for which the average unemployment rate is at least 120% of the average unemployment as determined by the Department of Labor or the State uh, Department of Labor. This rule was published in the Federal Register and is effective 1 January 2020 unless some significant adverse comments are received by December the 15th, 2019 which is about 12 days away. So uh, this is work that SBA has been doing for those companies that are currently hub zone. Uh, we know that those, those are great changes and for those that are seeking to be. Okay. So those are just some tips from the director's corner. So today is my pleasure, uh, excuse me, the data focuses on growing your business through federal contracting. Here's some key questions. Are you ready to grow, number one? Is your company procurement ready, number two? Can your company's capabilities fill the gaps in support of an agency's mission, which is really the key to success? We can have the greatest capabilities in the world, but if they do not meet the mission requirements of the folks you're trying to sell to, we're just uh, kind of blowing in the wind. So today, today's guest will answer these questions as, as he's told me he will. Okay. <laughs> He's still a secret for a moment. It is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Lafayette Thomas, the CEO of TM3 Solutions, and his partner, Mr. Thomas Moore. Now remember that if you've paid close attention, Lafayette Thomas and Thomas Moore, what a combination. They're here today to talk to us about how to grow your business through federal contracting. Uh, we had a surprise guest we thought we'd have with us today, uh, the small business specialist from the Washington Headquarters Service, which Mr. Thomas uh, will talk about. Uh, which is a key partner of theirs uh, that they work with. But the Washington Headquarters Service, for those folks that are not aware, that is the major agency that contracts for the Pentagon and everything they do in and around that little, little space of land on the river in Virginia. Okay, so without further ado, uh, Mr. Lafayette Thomas. Well, as you know, Murphy is in the room. So give us a moment and we will correct it. Uh, can you hear me now? All right. All right, we're good. So uh, again, thank you again, Mr. Marks, for allowing me to be a part of this forum as well as uh, MBDA. Uh, again, my name is Lafayette Thomas. CEO of TM3 Solutions. Um, TM3 Solutions, we're a services-able, veteran-owned small business. Uh, 
my partner, Thomas Moore, founded the company as an independent consultant back in 2000, 2009. We established a partnership. 2010, we hired our first employee. Um, collectively, we have close to 25 years of active duty service. Thomas being a Marine, you say once Marine, always Marine, I guess, but I'm an Army guy who uh, we've, uh, we, we've truly established a, a brotherhood and a tr solid partnership. Uh, we call ourselves the yin, yin and the yang. Um, a little bit more about uh, TM3 Solutions. Um, we have, um, we're services able veteran on small business, as I mentioned, we're an 8 firm. We, uh, we're currently doing, uh, doing work um, primarily in the DOD space. Uh, Navy is one of our largest client, Washington Headquarters Services, just uh, finished up a project over at HUD. Washington, excuse me, uh, Railroad Retirement Board and a few other agencies. And, you know, I'll get into some of that a little bit later, but just uh, wanted to give you a little um, background as to how we got to where we are today. Um, first and foremost, we had an opportunity to establish our brand. Uh, coming out of the military, didn't really know a lot about how to navigate the landscapes of uh, government contracting. Uh, received our first opportunity as a subcontract with our Navy client. Um, at that point, we were able to truly establish a brand. Um, with that particular opportunity, in all honesty, it was probably minuscule to some, but for us, it was, it was, a, it was an excellent opportunity. Started out with roughly like 100, um, 100 uh, hours of purchase orders. Um, so from that point, we grew that 100 hours until three FTEs in a short time of like about 90 days. Um, once we actually had the opportunity to Established a footprint in that space. Um, we really had some solid organic growth. We, uh, within the first year of our, our time over in that space, we grew from uh, those three FTs to 15 FTs. Um, and then from that point, uh, based off the relationships, um, our sponsor uh, agency, excuse me, our sponsor uh, company actually sponsored us for our facility clearance. Um, during that time, I think the process was it was relatively fast. I know it's uh, more of an arduous process now, but uh, within a matter of 90 days, excuse me, less than 120 days, we received our facility clearance. And and uh, so it goes from there. Um, what I'm going to do is get back on track with uh, with some of the slides. Um, so talking about our corporate uh, profile, TM3, again, we're top secret facility cleared company, um, approaching 50 employees right now, 8A firm, we're semi my level three for services. ISO certified, um, and also we have, uh, you know, IT70 uh, GSA schedule. Um, some of our professional certifications, um, you know, or CS, CISSP, we, we prior ourselves, uh, when we first started, we called ourselves a true cyber firm, but through mentoring and, and growing, we learned to not compartmentalize ourselves, just calling ourselves a, a cyber and IT firm. Uh, we, we, we're a firm that provides services. Um, and with that, we've been very fortunate to have some, some growth in, in other areas outside of the IT realm. Let's see. All right, let's go to the next slide here. Um, and again, I won't bore you with a lot of the um, uh, services, uh, if you will. Um, I'll just give a high level. So we're an enterprise IT, well, excuse me, we provide inter enterprise IT services. Uh, cyber and information assurance, program project management, and and those. Uh, in addition to that, I, I didn't put the slide in there, but we actually uh, provide software asset management, um, and we provide that with our client, um, Washington Headquarters Services slash JSP. Um, going back to uh, our capabilities. Again, what, what, one of the things I want to impress upon uh, my fellow small businesses is the first thing that you always want to remember, do not pigeonhole yourself or, or put yourself in a position where you, you're you feeling like you're boxed in. You have to leverage resources and relationships. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, and I'll get to some of my, my good, the bad, and the uglies here momentarily, but know your true strong suits and always feel comfortable enough to to speak to those with your with your client base with potential strategic partners and be very selective as you uh 
establish those relationships. So with that, I'm gonna go into our, what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, some of the lessons learned. All right, so uh, since 2009, um, so this is some of the goods, uh, by the way. So since 2009, um, TM3, we've received over $75 million in prime contract awards. Um, with a combined uh, 20, uh, 20 plus years of active duty service with my partner and I, I, I look at that as a good because we definitely want to continue to support the warfighter. We're very passionate. I grew up as a military brat, uh, went straight from my dad's household into active duty army. And, uh, and I feel really good uh, knowing that everything that we do today is to benefit the warfighters. Uh, in addition to that, uh, making a positive change in the business community, um, as well as the people that we bring within uh, our, our company. Um, it's, it's fulfilling to see that we, we pride ourselves on the fact that we have roughly 50% of our employees are fellow vets. Um, some of our other goods is, you know, we were part of a DOD mentor protege program. And under that program, when I tell you, it truly helped us enhance our corporate infrastructure. Um, from, a, from a business case, you know, my partner and I, <laughs> there are a lot of things that we, we were just winging until we were afforded that opportunity. And I'm gonna get to how we actually got to that point. Um, early on in this relationship, uh, well, excuse me, prior to the relationship, started going to a lot of industry days. Um, and one of the industry days that I went to was down in uh, New Orleans. And I met a former uh, senior executive um, by the name of Miss Alice Williams. And I think Miss Williams saw in me that she, she saw that I really had a desire and wanted to, to grow my company, but definitely didn't really have an understanding as to how to navigate the space. And so she gave me a to-do list of things um, she, she made me promise, the next time I see you, I want to make sure that you've accomplished these tasks. Uh, and if not, we're gonna have issues. So um, she said it with a lot of love, but by the same token was very stern and direct with her, uh, with her direction. So with that stated, my partner and I, I came back, I was very energized, you know, telling my partner, man, you know, you know, that conference was really, uh, really on point, you know, and I met this lady and, you know, she gave me some pointers and these are some of the things that we need to do. And so from that point on, my partner and I, we start registering from these uh, from the industry days and, and conferences and the such. And uh, eventually we went to um, went to this one industry day and and met uh, our future uh, mentor, um, which is a Fortune 500 company back in the back during that time frame. They were known as Hewlett Packard Enterprises. And then later they, you know, during several iterations, they went from DXE to Prospecta and, and so and so far and so on. So with that. Once we got accepted to that mentor project program, they did what they call a needs assessment, you know, really trying to understand the needs for us as a small to posture ourselves to be successful in this space. Some of the things that we we recognized early on is, you know, we didn't really know much of about much about uh, having a pipeline. A pipeline is something, you know, if you really plan to grow your company, you really have to know, you know. Uh, you have to lay out the direction, uh, you know, identify true opportunities that would, that, that you, how can I say, you don't want to just put a list, oh yeah, um, within this first year, I want to uh, have $10 million worth of contract. You have to be very strategic and methodical in your process. And so for my partner and I, you know, though we had, you know, we knew we had strong IT background, we took the time to meet with our, uh, our mentor, uh, create that pipeline, um, in addition to that, we identified, you know, we wanted to, uh, uh, again, enhance our infrastructure. So we became a semi level three for services firm, an ISO certified firm. And so now we have those documented repeatable processes in place. So I have to say now we're working more efficient and fluid than ever. Um, so those are some of the goods. And I would say uh, within that, you know, I have to highlight through, through this mentor protege, we how can I say, we finished the program on top. We actually was nominated and selected for the 2017 non-PERI award, um, which, is a, which is a great achievement in itself. Um, we've been fortunate enough to receive a few other awards, um, Department of Labor 2018 Higher Vets um, Medallion Program, um, been on the uh, Inc. 5000 list. And, um, you know, and, and the last good I'll say is making money and growing the business, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll move on. Uh, 
the bad. <laughs> so uh, so be realistic in your expectations. Um, you know, if you're really about this life, it's about working long consecutive days. Um, and hopefully if you if you're in a relationship, you know, hopefully your 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 partner, you know, they understand and willing to make those same sacrifices. And as well as, you know, trying to have that work life balance with the, uh, you know, with your your personal time, your family. But, you know, it's going to come at a sacrifice. Um, finding quality, trustworthy resources um, to represent your brand. And what I mean by that is uh, my partner and I, we recognized early on, you know, we didn't want to be a mediocre firm. We wanted to really, um, you know, showcase our talents and abilities and, and shine and, and make sure that whomever gave us the opportunity, they didn't have any regrets. Um, so with that, uh, when we would hire new employees, we would take our time to personally interview and vet them to make sure they were uh, qualified to represent our brand. Uh, some of the other bad are, are the financial woes. Um, be very mindful. <laughs> Early on uh, in, this, in this business relationship, there were times that we went months without seeing any pay. Uh, and there are times when we had to leverage our own personal finance to fund the company, um, you know, until such time came where we were able to establish uh, a solid relationship with a financial institution. Um, you you will obviously have to understand that there's times, even with the federal government, sometimes they don't pay as fast as we would like them to pay. They will pay. <laughs> um, and then if you're in a, a, a sub relationship with the prime, make sure that you take the time to really understand, um, you know, their financial situations, because we've gotten we, we, were, we were in a bad situation a few years ago with this one company uh, that we subbed under and they were. Uh, they were very late paying us, and fortunately, we had the capital to to make sure it didn't cause any major disruption from for our company. So that's the bad. Uh, the ugly. Uh, oh, the ugly is get it get it in writing. You know, there's no such thing as a as a handshake deal. Um, again, if you if if you listen to this, you probably avoid getting burnt in in, in ways that we have. Um, and I also understand that not everyone that has a BD title truly knows BD. What I mean by BD is business development. Um, and just realize that as it relates to your brand, no one can represent your brand as well as you. Know your company, know your offerings, and represent you know to your best. Um, again, I think I spoke on it earlier. Always vet companies uh, you're considering partnering with. Be sure their finances are in order, regardless of uh, the prime sub relationship and. and, and and the reason why I say prime sub relationships, because even if you were to, if I were to go out and sub to a fellow small business and they're having an individual supporting my contract, you know, it's imperative that all of our team members supporting that contract are taken care of because there are, there are ramifications for me as a prime, you know, if they aren't. So uh, just be sure to, uh, to do the necessary vetting, uh, you know, um, in regards to uh, the sub prime contract as well. Uh, be sure to have some good legal representation um, that truly understands how government contracting works. Um, and again, one of the things I would say as a, as an ugly is it's really unfortunate that so many small businesses do um, do wrong by one another. Um, you know, there's no need to have what I call that crab in a barrel mentality. There's plenty of work out there for all of us. And, and to be honest, we're uh, there's true strength in numbers as a small. We've been successful in partnering with, uh, we have uh, a decent amount of strategic uh, small business partners and, you know, we've won work together. We actually have a, a sizable contract with a fellow small business uh, in the Pentagon, you know, installing Wi-Fi throughout the Pentagon. Um, we have a, a small uh, business partner um, you know, and again, let me let me speak to some of the, sh the strategies um, as it relates to partnering. Partnering it allows you the opportunity to to get capabilities that you may not have. It may allow you to be sponsored, get a facility clearance. Um, it may uh, for for me for say uh, per se, our company received this one opportunity. It wasn't necessarily in our sweet spot, but the client had a certain amount of. Um, uh, not just loyalty, but they believe that we would deliver. And so we were very strategic in vetting a couple of fellow small businesses. Hey, here's an opportunity for you to get your foot in the door, um, you know, get some past performance, bring some extra monies in. And so those are some of the things that 
that I would encourage you as a small fellow small business, you know, leverage those relationships. Uh, you know, TM3, we're definitely open and amenable to uh, to to entertaining strategic partnerships, and and don't go in it thinking that you know uh, anybody's going to give you anything. You know, you have to earn it. You have to have you know you have to be a true value add. Uh, so going back to some of the TM3 tips for success uh, under this, understand the demand of doing business um, with the federal government. It's no cakewalk. Um, establishing a realistic pipeline, which I spoke on earlier. Um, and one of my sayings is a closed mouth don't get fed. You know, you have to feel comfortable enough asking the question. The worst thing that anyone can say is no. Um, know your competition. Uh, provide superior customer service. Again, it's about establishing that brand. And then in doing so, expand your capabilities. Um, don't, I think I spoke on it earlier, never get in a place where you feel like you're, you're just compartmentalized, you know, oh, I only do uh, uh, cybersecurity. We're a services firm. So, you know, represent yourself as such. Um, uh, know when to say no also there are times when we've accepted uh contract opportunities and didn't turn out so well uh but you know again my partner and i you know our tagline is no problems only solutions we live that we we bleed that so um we're, we're mission oriented but definitely be mindful of some of these opportunities that fall in your lap uh ensure that you have uh sufficient capital or lines of credit available uh those are some of the things that we it took a while for us to get to that level uh, before we had to use our own personal lines, whether it be with our uh, leveraging our lines of credit with our, our homes, <laughs> our credit cards and such. And then um, one of the other things is leveraging your relationships, which I spoke to earlier. Um, always be sure to have the NDAs and TAs in place. Again, there's no such thing as a as a handshake deal. Um, we've gotten, you know, again, we, we've been burnt a few times, so please be mindful of that. Um, establish and protect your brand. Um, establish trusted strategic partners. Uh, don't look at small business as competitors. Um, again, I feel like we're, we're truly a uh, force uh, in numbers. Uh, no better growth than a organic growth, in my opinion. Um, and I'll say that with organic growth, you know, Another one of our success stories within Washington Headquarters Services, uh, we responded to an, an opportunity, uh, <laughs> and it was a competitive opportunity, and we actually won the work. And so when I tell you that contract has grown easily a thousand times over, and so never turn down anything aside from your collars. I mean, if it, you know, once you do the necessary vetting and make sure that makes sense for you, but, uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, adopt our model. Failure is not an option. You know, we've given an opportunity to showcase our talents and abilities. Please, you know, uh, just just always remember the end state and remember, you know, why we're here. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, we are truly passionate about the warfighter, and hopefully, anybody and everybody that's on this call now have the same passion as as uh, my partner and I. Uh, have a good CPA firm. Um, <laughs> you know, if not. Prepare yourself for uh, for financial failure and and a, and a whole lot of unnecessary headaches and worries. Um, you know, definitely have a DCA compliant accounting system. Um, you know, when you're in a position to do such, and then also have access to a good attorney. And that's you know on multiple levels. You know, someone to truly look at your NDAs and TAs, and and sometimes you know who knows you may have to. Uh, take someone to court, <laughs> you know, trying to get your money back. Um, so that's that pretty much sums up uh, a lot of what I uh, was going to speak on. Um, and again, what I uh, what I wanted to, well, one of the things before I do forget is truly as it relates to establishing relationships with your, uh, with your small business um, liaisons, um, that's important. I mean, you know, those are the folks that's going to truly advocate for you. I've been very fortunate to establish uh, to establish um, relationships with um, with some of our small business liaisons. Uh, you know, when I, when I tell you WHS, Navy, you know, those folks have been really good to me, um, are good to us. Um, and and I'll say, you know, for folks that are truly 
interested in partnering with uh with with TM3, uh, we actually just won a sizable contract. Uh, are doing software asset management, and when I tell you, uh, you know, for us, you know, it was truly uh, a blessing to to be recipients of this award. So it's close to a six million dollar contract, and so for folks that may be interested in, in learning a little bit a little bit more about what we're doing over there or potentially partnering up. Um, you know, feel free. Uh, I believe on the slides, you'll have my contact info. Um, these slides are provided, correct? So yeah, my contact info for my partner and I, they're, they're, they're out there. Feel free to reach out. And then again, with having realistic expectations, I mean, you know, no one's just going to hand you anything. If it's a true value add or if we can, you know, work some strategies, we're definitely open and um, receptive to that. So with that said, I really appreciate uh, again MBDA, uh, Mr. Marks for for having us, and and I'm open for any questions. Yes. So uh, welcome back to WFPC. WFPC. How are you doing today? Out there? So, so listen, we understand uh, you can you can type in questions. You have them, and he took he answered a key question I was going to ask him about this previous this recent award that he won. Uh, and how did they, how's the relationship with, Doug, excuse me, I won't use an acronym, Washington Headquarters Services, for those folks that are out there that are not familiar with the DOD acronyms, uh, how's the relationship with, with, with that customer? As far as uh, words to describe how, how accommodating has been for us. Um, early, on, early on, you know, when we, uh, when we first got our, put in the door so to speak you know we what can i say we, we, as it relates to the organic growth we had an opportunity to do several capabilities briefs um you know based off the relationships with the small business professionals um and uh, if it's okay i'll mention uh Ms. Jeanette hudson she's she's definitely been very um pro small business you know just giving us the opportunity to do these briefs uh um we've actually did a did this one piece to work with human resources directorate something that wasn't necessarily in our niche but you know we got across the front line did great CPARs from it and so um in addition to that once we got established that relationship with WHS as we we're going through our CMMI certifications based off of a lot of the work that we were doing over there it actually helped or benefited us uh, going through that process of being semi certified level three certified um with uh with regards to let's see whs i'll just say this one two three we've re we've been recipients of about five prime awards from washington headquarters services so um you know i, I definitely encourage uh all the listeners out there to you know not just washington headquarters services but um you know establish relationship with other small business professionals out there that truly advocate for us okay yeah so i would tell you that uh whs the washington headquarters services is really small business friendly uh, for the folks that are out there and i know most if not all the folks that are out in the audience or uh, really interested on uh, you know, opportunities, opportunities and low-hanging fruit, if you, if you will. Um, so, so the um, the um, we will ensure that we have that. And, and, and Mr. Thomas said, Mr. Thomas said there's, that there's plenty of work out there, especially on the, uh, especially on the uh, as reservation, as they call it, at the Pentagon. And so, uh, and we'll, so ensure uh, we'll, we'll, we'll ensure that we have uh, Ms. Hudson's information, information posted, posted to the website, uh, so, uh, so that folks, folks you can, you can contact her. Uh, I've met her briefly, and I can tell you in the short period talking with her, uh, she's definitely uh, open to talking with folks to help uh, get their mission uh, done. So I have a question here. The questions are starting to flow at WFPC. Let's see. What is what is TA? What does TA stand for? It's team in agreement. Team in agreement. Well, the person that asked that question, team in agreement. And Mr. Thomas said, uh, I mean, they're open to teaming. I mean, uh, they can't do all that work by themselves. You know, I'm not speaking for them. Uh, I know with the Pentagon, the pressure they put on them. 
So they're always looking for some good partners. Uh, again, you got to bring value to the table. Absolutely. Say, so are you open to mentor to mentor pro day services that are specific to your next code and working strategies? Okay. So, so absolutely. Uh, I would say, as it relates for TM3 mentoring, I would I would be more interested in doing it in a informal capacity because we we already do it anyway. I mean, we believe in the each one teach one, paying it forward. Um, Right now, we are actually fresh from fresh out of the mentor protege program, and and I'll say this, you know, be mindful that there are so many things at our fingertips. Uh, these mentor protege, whether it's you know, you also have SBA mentor protege uh, program um, in addition to DOD. The beautiful thing about the DOD mentor protege program is, for us, it was funded. You know, um, so definitely do your research. Uh, you know, over that three-year tenure. Um, our sponsoring agency, uh, it's one of the three-letter agencies, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but um, that, that agency put up 1.5 over that three-year relationship. And so $500,000 a year was set aside for TM3, for our mentors to help us enhance our infrastructure. And who was that agency? NGA. Okay, no, I mean, you can say NGA okay. because okay. having been the former Army uh, Small yes, Business Director, uh, DOD really is the only agency that funds mentor protege, and and actually they they have three options. They fund it outright. They can do a hybrid, uh, or they can do one totally for credit. And the hybrid is a credit where the uh, mentor gets credit, and then we are also paying. I, I personally oversaw about twenty million dollars worth of uh, well, the DOD budget is about twenty million. We had about 22 mentor protege teams, and I had about maybe $10 million of that money in the Army that we, uh, now what that money does for the folks in the audience, it's not necessarily, it's not a contract that you're getting. No. It is to pay for those things to help build your infrastructure as a company. And so what we do, we actually paid a mentor to do that work in order so that you walk out the door with certifications if you're going for ISO or CMMI-3. And when that doesn't happen, uh, we definitely, I know, we go back to uh, the small business, so everybody's at the table, uh, so that uh, we get what we pay for, okay? So, so that's it. another question is, uh, what was your criteria for selecting a mentor? So, Early on, we wanted to find a mentor that was obviously successful in their business practice. Uh, a mentor that, well, let me, let me, let me, let me answer this in two ways. Um, one of the things moving forward, you know, why, during the vetting of mentors, and if you're fortunate enough to get into this program, just be very um, mindful that my, my mentor, and, and again, never biting the hand that feeds you, so to speak, my mentor was a Fortune 500 company, right? And though we received a lot from that mentor-protege relationship, you know, sometimes I've seen other uh, small business partners that have been in similar mentor-protege relationships, uh, but their mentors may have been not so large and they had the opportunity, they could actually relate more to um, the challenges of a small business, if that makes sense. Um, you know, again, my mentor was phenomenal. Uh, we, again, we, everything that we put on our list of what we wanted to accomplish, we did accomplish. Uh, but I would say, again, <laughs> some of these folks that are truly interested in looking at mentor protege programs you, your mentor doesn't necessarily have to be a fortune 500 company um and, and again you know you can have mentor protege relationships outside of uh uh dod you can have them with sba and um or even look at jvs and so those, some, those are some of the things that my partner and i are looking at as we speak right now we have another fellow uh a company that's they're large, much larger than us, but they've taken an interest in potentially uh, mentoring us and doing JVs. And uh, my partner's putting me on the spot over here. So JV, JV is a joint venture. Um, and the beautiful thing about a JV is 
um, you're basically sharing the same capabilities and designations as you know your your partner firm. And so, you know, for for us, if my partner firm happens to be an eight A stars firm or or have past performance in certain areas, now I have those same qualities as, as my partner, and vice versa. Okay. Um, this one is probably to me. I'm a woman-owned small business. We're not a veteran. How can I penetrate into the IT project management space with the federal government? Uh, partnering, um, strategic partnering. Um, you know, there there are times. You know, whether it be a firm such as mine. I mean, information technology, information technology is our sweet spot. Um, you know, reach out. Um, I'm definitely open and receptive to uh, to talking to my fellow smalls and. If there's something that we can work together on, collaborate on, you know, we're we're open and amenable to doing that. Okay, so you you heard that, so you can contact uh, Mr. Thomas at 703-348-4665. Next question: How would you go about getting your foot in the door if you don't have don't have any contacts in the government side of the house? That's one part. Second part, would, Second part, you, would you recommend industry, industry day like you did? Also, do you have any industry day you recommend? Uh, um, first of all, I, I would start with the Small Business Administration. I mean, they have a list of different industry days, you know, specific to your region. You know, as a small business, you always want to be mindful of your, your finances. And there's no need to travel to watch D.C. if you're in you know, small town in Florida, you know, like where I'm from, um, you know, look, look locally. Um, in addition to that, establish the footprint in the space that you don't have. Um, I, I basically correlate to the, to the previous question, um, establishing a strategic partnership with a fellow small that may be able to, well, not even fellow small, um, just leveraging relationships. Okay. So Mr. Thomas, Thomas did, did you hire, hire a firm? firm? Complete your 8A certification? No. Do not waste your money in doing that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not. And, um, you know, and if I could acknowledge, so I remember meeting uh, Miss Jackie Robinson Burnett some years ago. My partner and I were out in St. Louis. And when I tell you, um, if we can have more people like her, and I have a lot of fellow a um, strategic partner firms that will attest to the same. This lady went over and, and beyond to make sure that she streamlined the process for us. So let's let's use it, you know, to benefit ourselves. You don't have to waste money, you know, hiring a, a firm to 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 you know to do your 8A package. Okay. Okay. Also, also uh, can, can we connect, connect this week? week? If you have you time, time to discuss, discuss about, about your journey. journey. About my what? Your, your journey. journey. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 703-348-4665. Thomas Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, this next question says, what strategies or approach can you share to solicit for partnership? Example, let's say I'm interested in working with you would a capability statement be appropriate to send? Absolutely, that would be a Absolutely. good starting point. This question this says, says, did they did help they you help expand, expand capital, capital or increase, or your, increase capital? your capital? They is in the mentor-protege mentor relationship? relationship? Is that the question? I'm going to take an assumption. assumption. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the question. Uh, no. No, I mean, no, I mean, as relates to capital, capital that's, just that's just something, something that, that we, we had to, to do. do. Okay. So, so what, what does NDA stand for? That's a non-disclosure agreement, uh, which simply says that uh, we, after we sign it, we shake hands, that we won't divulge, you know, proprietary information. Uh, that, information that would hurt us in in our endeavors to, uh, in, in our partner together. To, uh, to partner together. 
this question, this I think question, is, I think is more coming. More people coming, are, people are coming back from coming lunch. Back from lunch. <laughs> How do you establish partnerships with other firms, small business or large? How do you identify the best fit, given thousands of government contractors out there? I think that question is somewhat subjective. I mean, you know, you have to definitely take the time to, to engage them and uh, research them. And, you know, I'm a spiritual guy. I, I kind of, I pray on things and, and, Majority of the time, things, things work, work out, out favorable for me. So, uh, so you know, it's, uh, you have to go with your, your gut. Go. I, I, you know, I would just add this. You know, I would just add this. Uh, talking about building a relationship. Talking about building a relationship. It's like any relationship you have to build. It takes time, trust, and work. And this, and this is Thomas. Thomas. I, I would add also, um, as a little Lafayette stated before, uh, attend these industry days or, you know, all of the different agencies also have small business meetings. Uh, you can go on their website and schedule a time to get in and meet with the small business uh, representative. And, and don't be afraid to ask. Um, uh, like Lafayette said, you have to have a good feeling with the, these different companies because, um, as it's been stated, all the companies have the same capabilities. You just have to have a good feeling, and because the, the relationship is like a marriage, so you got to make sure it fits for you. Okay, uh, it's really getting fun in here. So, so some of the barriers some of the barriers we have encountered in the past. It's past, it's past performance. performance. As the business recently started this September, what are your suggestions to overcome this barrier? I would say, this is Lafayette speaking. I would say definitely past performance. Sometimes your past performance is your your own personal professional experience. Uh, that's how that's how we got started in leveraging. Um, you know our partnerships. If, if I don't, if I didn't necessarily have past performance. Logistics. If I had a strong strategic partner, now we're going. We're pursuing this opportunity together. And again, revenue is revenue. There's times when we had to split an FTE. So you know, strategic relationships, um, leveraging your own professional experience. And that's at any at the start of a company. Typically, that's that is the path performance. Your own professional services. And I, I would add also sometimes, you know, especially these large companies, sometimes they'll have different jobs uh, listed on their website that they're recruiting for. Just talk to their uh, business development manager and ask, can you uh, subcontract that those positions to yourself? You know, you go out there, you find the right people. And, you know, uh, like Lafayette said, the closed mouth doesn't get fed. You just got to ask, you know, and don't be afraid to ask. The worst they can do is say no. So. So Lafayette, uh, does speaking to procurement officers really work? Because I can never get one of them on the phone. How do I reach them and make them true, make a true connection? Hey, beat the pavement, go there knocking on doors. You know, catch them at uh, some of these industry days or conferences. You know, and that's that's how I like with Hudson. I actually met her at a conference um, out in Chicago. And once we, you know, had an opportunity to sit down and, and grab a cup of coffee, had a, had a, maybe like a couple minutes to do an elevator speech, so to, you know, so to speak, and telling her about TM3, our capabilities, um, you know, and she offered us the opportunity to come in and do a brief for us, and you know, momentum started to pick up for us. So let me let me just add to that. Uh, I used to be a contracting officer many, many years ago. In fact, I've almost forgot about it. Everybody, Everybody wants to talk to a contracting contract officer, officer, and that's, that's great. great. I mean, they're the ones that sign the piece of paper. But I would tell you that you really need to make a relationship with the small business professionals that support that organization, because 
the, the right ones will get you in there to the, with the KO. Uh, so if you can't get the KO, find out who that small business uh, person is. And uh, you can even contact my office. Uh, my, uh, my website is wwwmbda fpc No, no dash. FPC.com. Okay. And, um, you know, I just had a brain cramp and can't remember my phone number. But we're going to get it before I get off this phone and I'll tell you what it is. And I, we can help you get to the small business professionals in any federal agency. I can assure you that. Okay, a couple of. I would also add that. Uh, I would also add that. Uh, it's not an overnight thing. You, you got to. You have to establish that relationship. So you have to be persistent and consistent. You have to. You know. You can't meet them one day and expect a contract overnight. You have to continuously establish that relationship again because they don't know you. You don't know them. But they they need to understand you. Understand that you do have a a, a good business and you are passionate about what you do. Okay, we got two final questions, and, and I'm searching for that phone number. You will get it. So how do you get the prime to show you financial information? If they refuse, then what? You sure? No, I'm not. That's a prime. Oh, I got you. I got you. I thought you were talking some other stuff. So, <laughs> so uh, let me let me uh, clear that up. Um, when it relates to the financials, it's kind of like checking someone's reputation, if you will. You know, just talking to other, whether it be uh, you know the client that you may be supporting, or whether it be uh, folks that have maybe worked for that company, or folks that have had sub relationships before. Shame on me. The, the the relationship that I'm speaking on in particular. I actually knew some folks that worked with this company before and they had similar issues, but I didn't ask the question. So you have to ask the question, just, you know, do, do whatever background you can on them, not just about their financials, but about their integrity, their brand. I mean, you don't want to be affiliated with someone that's doing subpar work or that's doing some unscrupulous things or, or, uh, or not paying their bills. Right. And then when, And then once you get to a point, you can actually run uh, a credit report on that company, Dun and Bradstreet. You know, you can actually see if they're paying their bills on time and if they have any uh, lawsuits. You know, go through uh, Sam.gov and, and and pull up their Sam profile and make sure that they don't have any uh, outstanding debts to the government as well. So. So. So, we come to the, the final question, but I want to let you know that you can continue to ask your questions. We will capture them and answer all questions and place those questions on the website, as will be the, the slide presentation that Mr. Uh, Thomas presented. Uh, you'll be able to download that. And also, uh, with all these high speed folks that are supporting me, you're even be able to hear WFPC, what took place today. So, the final question is my company niche is environmental. What is the best approach to get before a small business specialist for DOD, specifically in my state, specifically the Army in my state, which is Georgia? So I'll take a crack at that. So environmental, you got to go to the core of engineers for environmental. And if you dial 301-857-0200, a lady by the name of Claudia Barrera will provide you all the information you need, but we can get you the name of the small business specialist that's in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, for the Corps of Engineers. I hope that helps. So we've come to a close, and uh, but before we sign off, we want to, first of all, thank you very much, because without you, uh, we'd just be talking to space, and we know we got folks out there, and I know Mr. Thomas and Mr. Moore's phones are going to start ringing off the wall. By the way, Mr. Moore's number is... Uh, 703-348-4665. They share the same one. You remember the first, first and last names. So uh, 
Hey, our next webinar is is uh, scheduled for the 14th of January. Our theme is staying relevant to sustain and grow your your business. We have another one on the 4th of February called Diversify Your Portfolio Succession and Exit Strategy. And we, we'll finish off the year after Valentine's Day. I'm just throwing that out there. 12 days later in Houston, Texas with a, a major uh, on-site summit that we're planning. Again, we wanna thank you very much for joining FPC Connect by way of WFPC. We're signing off. Thank you. Thank you.